Did we uh, notice that Willie Rennie has uh, been criticising the CEO of, what is it, the Scottish? Scottish Council of uh, Voluntary Organisations. That's it. Um, for having opinions. For having opinions. Apparently, on the second question, there was an email that was um, exposed from one of Alex Salmon's assistants to this guy. Um, saying, oh, by the way, there's an interesting poll. Maybe you want to have a look at it. And it was 56% in favour of the second question, mm -hmm. off the top of my head. Um, so apparently this is now a conspiracy that Alex Salmon, obviously because his assistant gave this guy the heads up, Alex Salmon wants a second question. Well, I think it's great. I think we should talk about a second question because they'll never, ever, ever, ever tell us what they'll give us until after the re F referendum and then they'll kick it in the long grass. Oh no, you know why they won't tell you what they'll give you? Who's they? Because you ain't getting anything! All oh, right, who's they? Are we talking Westminster? The government. Actually, the suits. actually, the one thing I was it's interested... It's the British establishment. Yeah, yeah, well, the one thing I... Actually, the one thing I was keen on this week was... Uh, Kevin Williamson's letter, open letter, to Angus Robertson, which was a summary of the speech he made at the debate last week, uh, out of the blue. And that was the speech where Neil Finlay, La uh, Labour MSP for West Lothian, managed to, after 90% of his speech just parroting Labour Party policy, <laughs> suddenly turned around and, and dropped a bomb. And uh, I don't know if you oh, recall God. what he said, it was all over the press. And the bomb like, was? Well, basically, he was labelled a, a Labour rebel. Oh, you mean he's actually thinking for himself? He, cri he criticised the Labour establishment, effectively. What he did manage to do, he parroted all the Labour Party line, the whole lot. That's what he spent his time doing. It had nothing to do with what the debate was supposed to be about. That's right. Nothing at all. Then he did this kind of weird thing, this sort of stood up and thought for himself job. Then... The one thing he hadn't mentioned in the whole sort of first three quarters of his, of his um, lecture was cybernats. But he found a way to get it in. Did you notice that? I was just thinking, you mean, do you really mean that there's SMP supporters out there that are computer literate? SMP supporters? Yeah, I mean, cybernats isn't that what it means? People that can use computers that are, that are sort of... Anyway, there was a wee, there was a two-day sushi but, while, while you were it's, away. But it's a pathetic, it's but, a pathetic expression, and they all use it like like, like some kind of brainless... It presumes that Labour Party members don't do exactly the same thing. They do do exactly... Everybody does it. Well, not everybody, but people well, inclined to, regardless they not of do it level. on the consultation that they had um, south of the border, the Westminster consultation, oh, I on, love. on it, where, where they all... I mean, and they're obviously uh, not as computer literate, as you'll notice this one here, Labour, as computer literate as SNP, because they all just parroted and gave the, the party... Anyway, you missed the sushi. It was a two, only a two-day sushi. It was the first time, you know, Labour, S MSP breaks ranks, or Rebel, or the, no. the headlines were all puffed up, of course. Um, and he, he didn't, he didn't. He essentially, didn't. essentially, what he said was that he supported the social network across the UK. The guy, the union guy, <laughs> the union guy that stood up was quite interesting <clears throat> because he basically stood up and said, well, look, we're not going to support our brothers down south in Wales, in Ireland, like we support our Spanish mining brothers at the moment. Mm. So, you know, I mean, the internationalism of unions is, is not going to change the fact that they don't have if you like, an English union to be bolted onto. It's quite interesting, the whole thing. But the Labour side, the pro-Labour side, were looking for something. If they couldn't get the full national, uh, sorry, in independence, they, they were looking for Devo Max. They don't want the Tories to be in control. You've got to no. bear in mind that also president, present at this debate were quite a few... Uh, much <coughs> real socialists, in fact. There were a quote. Oh, I don't mean... You mean trots? Yeah. No, socialists, you know, not like the Labour Party. Yeah, the Labour like Party's never been socialist in its pub, no. ever. No. Stuart, no. Stuart missed this. The meeting is closed. People are getting up and leaving. And Pia, Raymond Pia... Simon. Simon Pia, sorry. Stood up on the edges and made a speech. 
And basically, the, the impression I got was he was there to keep everybody in line. Well, he is the... You know? No, he's, he's, he's not the than now. He's you mean he's no longer the spin doctor for no. Labour in Scotland? No. Well, what's his job now? Um, he's, he's, as far as I know, he's left it, so he's, he's not there. He's, well, he's, he's got back. up and he... Exactly. the party line. As, as people were leaving and ignoring him and all the rest of it. And it was like, he's been sent here to stand up and make that speech. Mm. Oh, and I mean, it wasn't terribly coherent. But the see, the, it, it, it's that whole thing, that um, democratic deficit that's in there with people being feared to actually have a talk about it, to be open to, so that people can, you know, somebody go, oh, I never thought of that. Or it's like, you're, you're not allowed to think of that. It doesn't matter what it is, you're not allowed it to was, think of it. It was very strange because, I mean, it was obvious that this was factions of the labor movement that didn't all agree with each other about everything. Because people didn't get up and ask questions. They got up and made statements. Mm. Did you notice that? Oh, I was really... Mm. So what, I mean, the thrust of the debate was lost, as far as I was concerned, yeah. because there wasn't a debate. There was can no we, discussion about can, a way forward. And can we come back to the point, the chair, she was, I'm going to be Who was rude, the chair? she was pish. Who was the chair? Oh, I can't remember. She was absolutely rubbish. She was to start with, she announced that it was going to be 15 minutes each. Um, and That's Kev Williamson, time. his speech was 15 minutes. Guess how long Neil Findlay's was? Wait, 26 he's minutes. He's an MSP that talks on 26 time. minutes, and it was... Yeah. Oh, well, uh, Labour did so badly, this isn't a direct quote, but this is the gist of what he said. Labour did so badly, even I got elected. He did yeah, because so he was a list. Um, and that, that's, they, they got a lot of people that they never expected. All the superstars who were two um, have always been the first past the post, because, well, where else would Labour come but first past the post? Um, and they were wiped out. Um, and actually, at the end of the day, people like Neil and all that, um, they've just got to get their heads. Same with Kezia. They, they are a bit more independent in mind. It's simply because they, they didn't need, you know, they weren't going to get elected. Same applies to the SNP, by the way, with the amount of... Um, people of oh, the yeah, SNP yeah. who, um, and I'd just like to ask those at the top of the SNP, would you have picked XXX? Because, I mean, there's, there's plenty of Neanderthal backwards men in there All right, as well. well let, let, me, let me make, expand on my point, which was, was uh, Kev Williamson's speech, and which he, this open letter to Angus Robertson, which is basically this, con uh, both the, the unionists and the SNP hierarchy are deliberately conf confusing the public on what might happen after a yes vote. If, if there is a yes vote in 2014, uh, the SNP pretend that they will automatically run everything and therefore their policies are stood up by the, the unionists and attacked as being, oh, if you vote yes, this is what you'll get. It is far from certainty. In fact, I'm absolutely certain that if there is a yes vote, very shortly after that, the SNP will fall apart because the left and the right do not get on. And there's every chance that there will be a coalition in 2016 where policy, policies that are not necessarily those of the SNP could become the policies of the first independent Scottish government. Yeah, that's the main thing I think that you have to look at. Um, well, if there's a yes vote, all that does is entitle the present government to open negotiations. You're not actually independent no. after that. And and the SNP is not a political party. It's the an independent I'm, I'm movement. I'm sorry, who is going to be left after a yes vote? There isn't going to be a Labour Party after a yes vote. Oh, I think there'll be a... a oh, if there's a yes vote, don't you worry. Phil, those with inside the left... No, Phil, those, those inside the Labour Party, if there's going to be a yes vote and you're going to get independence, the people inside the Labour Party that will then have the power as be, such and the Phil. influence will be those that have gone for it. You lot can Who? go south of the border. Who? What? Who's gone for it? Hmm? Who's gone for it? You've still got two years. No. Who's gone for it? None of them have broken ranks yet. They're not going to break ranks. No, not at the moment. If, they, if there is not a no vote, right? If the status quo isn't maintained, the Labour Party is dead in the war. You, you have to totally reinvent yourselves. Yeah, but the, uh, but the SNP cannot pick up in their current coalition, left and right coalition status, they cannot pick up the real Labour vote that, will, that still remains, especially in the west no, of Scotland. I'm, I'm sorry. It may not be called the Labour Party. A lot of politicians are pretty malleable. 
Don't you worry. I was always a nationalist. We just could never say it. They'll be coming well, up. They will oh. all be... No, I'm sorry. Now, if they don't stand up and be counted before the vote, <coughs> they're not going to be trusted. They're not trusted now. Well, I mean, sorry, they're the least trusted political party. Well, I'm, I'm happy. Well, if you talk about Labour as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Because what do they stand for? <coughs> I've got a clue, actually. I don't have a clue. Uh, even though they are actually in bed with the SNP or the SNP. All right, well, well look, Phil, here's a question. Do you, you trust the SNP? What do they stand okay, for? But do you, you're inside, well, the, you're inside the Labour Party. If, you, if one person. education. But at surely, the moment, yeah. yeah. But surely you can, you can answer who, who, who do you think could appear? from inside the Labour Party to, you know, to resurrect a, a Labour Party after a yes vote, Scott? Uh, oh, um, within it, um, probably an ex-First Minister. Ma Ma Chisholm? No, an ex-First Minister. What's his name? McLeish. 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 Henry's doing that, and don't worry, Henry will have a, a, still got a lot of supporters in there. Well, But um, you must remember that the Labour Party is a very vicious, Nasty party, by the way. And what's ask the first ask thing they'll Iraqis. do? What is the first thing they'll do after the referendum? They will tear themselves apart. Oh, of course. I, I told you so. Your fault. Stab, stab, stab. Yep. That's the first year Nothing dealt with. They've then got another year to get their mm. shit together mm. before for the 2016 election. election. Well, it's not going to happen. They're well, that's one of the things tactics. you're going to get for independence. You're going. It's going to be. Um, it's going to be a breath of. Fresh air to a circus, or it's going to be like a, a multifaceted so civil no. war. You're going to have the SNP kicking ten bells out of each other. It's not well, the only one. I'm have a look at the Tory I'm sorry, party. I'm sorry, we're in deep shit. If the SNP kick shit out of each other, there's not going to be anybody capable of running the government. Oh, they will. Oh, right, who? Uh, the SNP will not. The SNP question. will argue within them, their own ranks about keeping it tight. So they can win the 16 election. And they're the most disciplined political party oh, yeah. we've seen in the British Isles for a very long time. The British Isles, not just Scotland. Because mm -hmm. it's no hard to be the most disciplined party in Scotland. <laughs> <They'll>... <laughs> Willie Rennie can stick everybody in a taxi and gas them. Uh, yeah. Uh, they'll what, they probably ask? will, but then I should have. Well, uh, uh, they would probably start. The battle would come after independence with the SM. SM. It won't. It? They won't. You don't think so? I think no, so. They're oh, dis no, they're, they're uh... disciplined enough now. They're going to have their wee spat about NATO. And I'm sorry, that's a storm in a key teacup. Because all that will be said is party line, party line, party line. We can decide this in 2016. Yeah. That's what they'll do. The Labour Party will continue down the road they're going. They won't even give a genuine second option for the second question. They won't do that. They can't afford to do that. All They've right. got enough problems there already. Yeah. Because oh, it's not just up here. Oh, yeah. If you yeah. actually have a look at the Labour Party south of the border as well, uh, I think they're going to be in for a doom when it comes to the next election. I mean, bringing mm. back Blair. Yeah, uh, right, right. Look, no, can I, I, can I, I come back to the point. Is I do not, do not believe that the, the Yes campaign can win this referendum. As long as the SNP hierarchy do not clarify what, what the situation is, they still pretend that they will automatically be in power and that whatever policies they have at the moment will be the policies of an independent Scotland. And that doesn't necessarily follow. And the trouble is with that situation is it allows the unionists to constantly say, what if, what if, what if. If you actually clarify the situation and say, it doesn't matter what happens, uh, yeah, I mean, yes or no in 2014, if you get a yes vote, 2016 you have an election on policies. You cannot have a referendum on policies. No. But it, it's simply yes or no. Policies and what you do is after you're actually sitting there and you have the reins of power and you've also got the bank account. You're missing it. And the balance. You're totally missing it. Enlightenment. As long as the unionists are screaming and shouting about SNP policies, the way this referendum will be won, will be a grassroots level. It'll not be Salmond, it'll not be the SNP. It'll be exactly what the Yes campaign are trying to do now, which is get you to persuade your neighbour to mm. vote. You keep the unionist eye off where the ball really is, and it's really mm. down at the bottom. It's not anywhere near government. Great strategy. Let them ask all their questions, da da da. You go to the pub, you talk to Willie Smith that you've not seen for years, uh, he's undecided. Well, you make him decide. 
that that's the way it's going to be won. It's not going to be won by arguing about politics and policies. I'm sorry, it's going to be won by you persuading your workmates.